It's okay. Oh, well, we're done with multicolor. There are a lot of multicolor cards in this set. Yeah. A lot. A that lot. That took a while. Yeah, only four hours. <laughs> in. Yeah, colors don't come we're even dead. close. Uh, oh, yeah. This, but but there is like a ton, a ton. This, this is fine. This is good time. The, yeah, the, we are you. fine. We only have the colors to go and then the multiverse let let you, yeah yeah. No no, no. Uh, we are making good time. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Making uh, yeah. good time. Uh, do we want do we want to continue with white? Up to Scotty, I guess. Yeah, Scotty is yeah, late go. for you. Okay, I can I do need to sleep at some point because I do need to wake up in like 8 hours, but um we can at least do white comments and probably uncommons at, okay. at least. So you're going to mm. tell us after white comments how you feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, first up, aerial boost. One and a white uh, for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains flying until end of turn. And it has Convoke. Um, when it is an okay combat Drake, even if you exclude the Convoke cost, the Convoke cost is kind of weird, but it does allow combat trick or this combat trick to play defense decently well. Or Vigilance. Yes, yes. Vigilance also does help this quite a bit. But it also allows you to play defense well. Like, uh, if you have access to zero mana combat tricks on your opponent's turn, those are pretty nice. Like, you're still not hoping to necessarily cast into open mana, but it depends from your opponent's colors. Like, there are certain scenarios where I just am happy to cast combat tricks into open mana. And, well, your opponent kind of has a hard time playing around the zero mana combat trick. Like, you, you can't just not attack. Um... You can use this to flip battles also pretty effectively, but do you want to spend a con to flip your battle? Yeah. In, in some scenarios, Sometimes. you would prefer to flip them without, but if you need it, you are happy spending a card to do it, I think. And also, like, can finish the game off later on pretty well. Mm. Overall, I do think white has a better combat trick and... Way, be way better. <laughs> and green probably has a better combat trick. Uh, but this is fine. I am fine playing one to two of these in my decks. Even if I have the other combat trick, I'm fine playing this, but I'll give this like a C minus. Yeah, I want a C minus as well. So the vigilance is huge here. And the vigilance cards are, there is a, in, in just white, there is a, what I think I see agrees with me, a really good vigilance uh, equipment that we're going to see soon. Yeah. There is a four mana. Da, uh, you get two, two, two vigilance bodies, yeah. and there is a really you have good. A, yeah, you have a surprising amount of vigilance yeah. in this set. That yeah. is true. That is true. And you get you get a three mana three three vigilance that can also put mm -hmm. one one counter somewhere else and give that vigilance for a turn. So it's more flexible than just a three three vigilance. And I like three three vigilance for three mana. So it's not a small thing. I think it's gonna be uh, very very common for you to have a vigilant creatures creature with vigilance and play spend all of. Spend your mana on one creature, attack with everything, and still have this z uh, be zero mana. I think that's going to be a very, very common situation. Um, just with the commons, uh, invite. And uh, there's some other regional things, but these are the main ones. Uh, so that's really nice. Yeah, I'm on a C minus, and C minus is kind of high. Usually I give tricks D plus, but I think this, this will play out really, really well. In maybe in this exact set, if there was not. That other white trick that we are going to get to, this would be way higher. But the other white trick is also common, and it's just so good. So, <laughs> so, so that's the thing. There is overabundance tricks you can have, and I'm probably gonna the other trick. I'm gonna be probably be putting like any amount, and then this guy gets kind of pushed down because tricks do require you to have creature on the battlefield and situation uh, where you're gonna play a trick. So. But still, really, really good trick. C minus, really, really good one. C minus for me as well. NCA, what was your grade again? C minus. Oh, by the way, we finally got the commons. Like we basically reviewed yeah, no commons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm happy we got the commons. Yeah. Commons are the most fun as always. So commons are the most important. Like this is what your deck is gonna yeah. look like. Commons. Yeah, I love. They like, and you don't spend an hour discussing commons. Well, well. Hey, uh, hey, hey. Let's, let, let's cut that. Let's cut that. Um. Cut it out. But you know. They're nice, they're relatively short, and also I find them most fun to talk about. And usually, like, comments aren't... Uh, we have seen something similar before, and it's kind of, like, fun discussing how the card is probably going to fit here, and 
whatever. Um, anyway, next up, Alabaster Host Intercessor. Uh, five and the white for a fire action samurai, it's a 3 4. When it enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Alabaster Host Intercessor leaves the battlefield. Plane cycling 2. And plane cycling, because this is the first of the cycle, says. Two mana, discard this card, search your library for a planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. And we have one of these in every color. Um, I mean, it's it's a sh- massive uh, Banisher Priest, basically, with plane cycling. A massive white guy. Yeah, I mean, I, I like this card. It's, it is a six drop, and you would rather still not use the plane cycling, but it has it, which is nice. It, you can also splash for these with themselves, but I would... I st- think it's not worth it because you still have to almost like usually spend the first first one cycling and then it becomes kind of <clears throat> meh but i kind of think this just good top end in every white deck even in my most aggressive in my most aggressive white decks i might cut this card but in general good top end plane cycling is really nice yeah it's like really good six drop i think yeah c seems fine but again it, it's <laughs> I can even see C plus for sure, but like it's really good at getting that uh, clearing the battles, right? It's it's very good to top end for clearing the battles, uh, but it is very susceptible to removal, right? You really don't want your six drop getting removed, and then it's kind of hard to attack and block with this one because you're again very afraid. But uh, White has good tricks, so that can help. I'm okay with a C. It's gonna be interesting seeing seeing it going up or down, but sometimes you just need that land. You gotta get a land. Uh, so that's a really nice extra. Yeah, okay, with a C. Yeah, I'm pretty hot on this, and I'm 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 at the C plus range. Uh, I think three four is actually the size in the body. I'm not actually that worried about throwing this in front of other creatures. And then if they have the combat trick, you know, sure. Like maybe we fell too far behind because we played a six drop, but okay. I don't mind just like playing this down and taking anything really. Yeah, yeah, same. Uh, same. Really, really works. Really, really. Actually, incubate tokens, right? Like it just kills the incubate token. Yeah, I mean Wasn't most of that... the time, most of the time for six mana, I would still rather kill up uh, exile a four drop mm-hmm. until this leaves. But it's nice that if you are in a good spot, you can just get rid of an incubate token forever. Okay. And it does make it a little bit better, I guess. Also, it's like backup and stuff. Like you can ex- exile like a three drop that's gotten a counter or two or something, which is nice. Um. Next yeah, up, yeah. Alabaster Host Sanctifier. One and a white for a Fire Exian Cleric. It's a 2 2 and it has a lifelink. Now, this is probably the 10th time we've seen this card <laughs> at this point. <laughs> uh, always good. It's never been bad, actually. I do think lifelink gets a little bit worse in this set. Right? Because, yeah, because battles exist. Yeah, snowball and... effect, huh? Yeah, and like. I imagine some amount of the game, like, all games are still going to resolve some of the around life total, sure. But, like, games might more so resolve around battle life totals uh, in some scenarios than life total itself. And even if white, like, even if white wasn't playing that many battles, your opponent might just more care about hitting battles. Anyway, life link is still always nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start as a C. Plus, I would generally probably go B minus. I was thinking even about C, but Chichu Lifelink is is really nice, and there is a bunch of backup things in this set. This is a really nice place to put some counters onto. So I'll go C plus. Yeah, I'm on high C plus. I can see this going to B minus easily. Like equips plus and plus on counters, and I think yeah. battles yeah. actually make this great because sometimes I think there are going to be a lot of situations where. You gotta attack over the course of two turns to clear a battle, but you kind of really want to do it, and this helps. Like this life linker helps with that. Uh, but equipment and plus and plus encounters also push it uh, over the top. Like I think there are gonna be decks that uh, just try to go face and that punish you extremely hard if you try to clear battle over two turns instead of over just one. Uh, and this does help a lot there. But uh, I mean, two to life link, you can never go wrong. I think it works really well in this set. Uh, can see it easily going to B minus, but I'm gonna start yeah, as actually, a high C Actually, I'll, I'll go to B minus just because I, even though the battle thing still exists, there are a lot of cards that go well with 
this like a keyword thing yeah backup and, uh, yeah, yeah yeah backup the good equipment uh, even tricks equipment is really good i'm, I'm okay going to be my start right away yeah because yeah it's true like these are just I sold you I sold you on it instead of yeah. and, and but you gave it a lower grade. I mean it, it is a nice B minus. It's not like uh, B minus is pretty good grade anyways for any two group. Cody? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm on a C plus, but uh, the the battle the battle thing does cut both ways. It depends on who has the battle and who doesn't, right? Like if you have the battle and your opponent doesn't, then um, this actually really helps you because you can you can attack your opponent's battle without worrying about necessarily like losing too much, uh, too much on the crackback in terms of just dying mm -hmm. when you're trying to develop yeah. your board by killing a battle. But on the flip side, if your opponent has a battle and you don't, right? It's not like usually speaking in those scenarios, you can like your opponent has like a three two and you have a two two, you can pretty easily attack your two two into their three two because you know you're going to be gaining that life back and the race really favors you. But the dynamic changes if you attack with a 2-2 and then they get to hit their battle. They hit, they get to hit a battle, right? That's, like, really bad for you, like, in that case. But yeah. it, it, it just really depends on who's battling, which is really interesting for this card, which it's not, like, a debuff and it's not a buff. It's just, like, a lateral change in how you have to evaluate combat. Okay. Okay. Angelic Intervention. One the white for an instant. Target creature or planeswalker you control gains protection from colorless or from the color of your choice until end of turn. If it's a creature, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, I was gonna say why the, isn't this a reprint of Feet of Resistance, but Feet of Resistance couldn't choose colorless, right? Yeah, Feet of Resistance is worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so strictly better Feet of Resistance. Mm. And it does matter a lot in this set, I think. Yeah, a lot and a lot, but it's nice. Like, at least yeah. you can get through the incubate tokens, yeah. Or, like, block them and Blur? so on. Um, yeah, this card is fantastic. It's Feet of Resistance. I am almost the... I want to say the best common in M21. Um, but nonetheless, it's a fantastic trick. It kind of does everything you <laughs> want your trick to do. It wins combat. Leaves a plus one plus one counter on it. It dodges rem or like it helps against removal spells. You can dodge removal spells. You can kind of like with flying often finish the game with this. It just does everything you want for a two minute trick. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I I gotta say, there's one thing that uh, doesn't really matter in basically every game that you're ever gonna play in limited. Elspeth kind of doesn't need, and Planeswalkers kind of don't, in Limited, they don't need to have a really good card that also protects them from <laughs> from the attacks. Like, that's, it's going to be Fury. Your like, opponent playing Elspeth, and you finally get an attack to do it, and they just protect the Elspeth, and uh, maybe they just even don't care. Maybe, maybe just they just uh, don't even block anything and kill you. Uh, that's going to be, like, <laughs> irritating as hell. Because every white deck wants this, a lot of this, and then, wow. Uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, just a side note. Um, I mean, I got, I, I, it's a B minus or a B. I, I don't think it's uh, it cannot be lower. It can't be lower or higher. How highly I'm picking it? I mean, I think at the cards that I don't give B to that many cards. I and think I'm gonna be picking some cards over it that are B. Ah, fuck it. I'm gonna give it a B. I think this card is amazing. <laughs> Scotty. Uh, co combat tricks are another thing i guess we should talk i don't know if you talked about it with aerial boost i don't actually remember but co combat tricks also get affected by the nature of how battles change mm -hmm. the way you do math mm -hmm. in a similar way to uh shoot i forgot what mechanic that we just we just had super recently but uh you're, you're more blocking is going to happen more actual blocking is going to yeah, happen yeah, because yeah, of battles yeah. exist you know which yeah. means there's more chances for yeah, combat tricks to actually translate into removing the creatures. Oh uh, yeah, you mean to toxic in the last set? Right? Toxic, yes, yes, yeah. because of toxic in the last set. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I, the mechanic. Uh, co the blocking just happens a lot more, so angelic intervention gets a big boost there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be as well. Mm -hmm. Next up, attentive sky warden, two and a white for a two two flyer. When it deals combat damage to a player or battle. Transform to one ink, pay the token you control. Oh, it's also a Phyrexian. Which can matter, but I am uh, reading types. Uh, um, Windrake with, I guess, some upside. If you're pretty high on incubate tokens, I can definitely see playing this card. But even then, I'm not 
too excited about this because you do need the incubator tokens for this. But if you if it gets, like gets one, it's still already pretty good. Um, but overall, I don't know. I'll pick it like a D plus. I I think I'm gonna pick this over other D level cards in case I just end up with a bunch of incubator tokens. But maybe still a D. I'll I'll start this. As, eh, I'll go D. I don't know if it is even that good in incubator decks. There are not that many. An invite, you're not really gonna have incubate. Uh, uh, you're not the only, just the only invite. deck that might be interested in this. I think is white black, like on the only deck. White black? But black doesn't have that many incubates. It's like blue has. Maybe I don't know. I I don't think blue or white cares about this, because it's not a knight. It's uh, like if you're playing a green white deck and you have that ramp card this can be like you play it and you incubate uh, use it right away yeah, there is like yeah. in in the the reason i'm t talking about like blue uh white is because uh, blue has the three mana draw card and incubate three and mm -hmm. then you get a three three instead of paying two mana that's like you got two extra mana i don't think it's a small thing to get these extra things but you really need that so i'm gonna start with a c minus actually because i think if you get enough maybe you get some uncommons maybe you get rare but uncommons um it can do work it's also flying against battles i guess but it doesn't protect you flyers like good against battles when you play them but bad against battles when when you're blocking uh defending the battle hey, i'll move to a d plus but i still i think it's gonna be rare that you want this card in your deck, so I can't really see a C grade personally. Black has like one incubate common, which is one one life linker that incubates two from the graveyard. Like the other problem is like blue white, I think has two better three drops almost always. Uh, yeah. Actually, three better three drops at common almost always. I remember two. I think Billy Rider is also better. Uh, that the vigilance guy? No, the double strike guy. Ah, I think that's also better because it's a knight uh, in most scenarios. But yeah, I'm fine moving to a D plus. Maybe it will sometimes okay, find nice. a deck where it's good, but I doubt it's gonna be often at all. You know, Scotty, can, could you move the life linker to to life link like to C plus for me? In basically every set, I pick it as a high C plus, and then I'm gonna see if I'm gonna pick it higher, but because I think it plays out really, really nice with the cards, but still. Uh, just in case. Okay. Um, I'm kind of with Lolo with the optimistic. If, if you actually get this rolling, you're it's going to actually feel like you're doing unfair things in Magic, right? It, it is going to feel like you're cheating on board presence. in Because in, if, if you're flipping immediately and the incubation cards are like actually just creating creatures, they're like super good for their rates. Um, so if you're just consistently attacking with this, even like, I mean, hopefully twice, then... It's gonna you're gonna spiral super far ahead uh so that's like a super high ceiling for me and i think i have this at a c minus yeah the, the ceiling is really good high like the obviously i think i think it's a d plus and it will drop down from d plus because i don't really see why white decks would want this honestly the dream is like, like... I, I can i can see the dream for sure that's why i gave it a d plus and not a d minus um but i don't think it's gonna happen the dream is you play a four mana zero one that makes uh, incubate five, and flip that right away. But uh, yeah, it is if you get if you do this few times, it's like two two mana every time that you're getting. Yeah. Bola Slinger, three and a white for a creature cat sold it. It's a two two. It has backup one. Is this the first instance of backup? Might be. When, anyway, it says, when this creature enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. If that's another creature, it gains the following ability until end of turn. Whenever this creature attacks, tap target artifact or creature and opponent controls. So it's a four mana choo choo, but when it attacks, it taps something, and then it can be a tree tree, or you can give the ability to something else for a turn and put a plus one, plus one counter on it. And then if it's back up two, you just put like two plus one plus one counters on a creature but the same thing um i mean these cards almost like i don't remember a single card that has had this line of text whenever this creature attacks tap target artifact or tap target creature and opponent controls being good not the single instance of the card being good 
There's always dog shit, but... Territorial <laughs> Hammer Skull? Uh, three mana, two, three. There was a three mana, two, three. In Ixalan. Yeah, Territorial Hammer Skull. That was like one of the best white commons. Yeah, invite. I didn't, I didn't play Ixalan, so that doesn't count. Okay. Uh, mm, I guess... Four mana, three, three with this ability is an upgrade on what we get. Uh, it's pretty similar to what we get. But it does do it on ETB. Like, it does kind of press battles decently well, but... You still will have, like, if you put the counter on some somewhere else, this has a very hard time attacking, even if it taps something down. I don't know. I'm gonna start this as a, at the SD+. Plus. I think it's gonna go down, but I can see this being actually playable. Yeah, I can see it going oh, to C-. minus. I'm also on a yeah. D+. Plus. Oh, sorry, sorry. No. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on a D+. Plus. And uh, this is gonna be nice with some battles. That's about it. <laughs> And, like, uh, the nice thing about it is there's also tricks, right? The white tricks that are going to be pretty fucking good. Um, so opponent is, like, always going to block this. I can see this going up to a C range, but D plus as a start. Yeah, like, the, cur the curve sequencing with battles is a little awkward, right? Because I, I think the most powerful thing you can do is actually have a surprise combat with the backup, putting the plus one, plus one counter on something else. But, like, at, at that point, like, when are you casting your battle, you know? You have to yeah. have the creature to threaten the battle, and then you have to also cast the battle, I guess. Yep. Yeah. To put the backup on. Which there is, is a chance. We, there is a chance if this card is good, it actually has nothing to do with battles. It's just like killing yeah. our opponent. I, I like killing our opponent. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I still don't like love this card. <laughs> I mean, in ter if if you want to compare it to the past, I think this is one of the more powerful effects like this. I still yeah. think this is yeah, a D yeah, plus. Yeah. D plus. D plus. It's not an Aitor Phyrexian, like, that doesn't help it as well. It's not Fiend Binder, that's a, literally an F, it's fucking dog shit, it's, it's so trash, I, I don't understand why you would ever play the card in your deck. Yep. Uh, the one in Shadow Sovereign is Yep. Uh, cut short, two and a white for an instant, destroy target Planeswalker that was activated this turn, or tapped creature, and it has Convoke. I like. I yeah yeah yeah. I was gonna say I kind of like this. Usually, uh, this is like for two mana or something, and I don't like it. It can it sometimes ends up being solid if you are like a slow white deck. The problem is that slow white decks generally don't exist. Um, but I still like this. In, even in like semi aggressive th things, like I assume my opponent is at least gonna try to hit the uh, battles or something. And we do have, like we touched on previously, we do have a bunch of Vigilance in this set. And if you can, like even if you can leave this up for one, or like white mana, or like one colorless mana, that's pretty fucking nasty. And, well, sometimes you just have three creatures and then you're like, ah, okay, let me kill your thing for free. I like this. I'm gonna give, it, it still has the problems of you only can destroy a tapped creature and so on but this is like costed so it, it's not even that horrible if you like are pretty far behind it's still only like three mana for this effect like it's not that much over costed uh on its own i'll start this as a c yeah i'm okay but <laughs> i mean i usually don't like these effects but instant convoke and vigilance creatures that are really nice in 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 this set like help it a lot like i can see no, I'm gonna start it as a C plus actually. Like I usually hate this effect. Uh and yes, kill a planeswalkers. Everything needs to target planeswalkers. Like fuck it, I was unlimited. <laughs> so that doesn't do anything for it, for the grade. Uh but uh, <laughs> they're gonna be you're both gonna be attacking. Uh rarely the opponent is not attacking ever. So I can if you're like always the aggressor, which I don't think that happens that often with battles being introduced. Like people... the only problem is that it, uh, it still is like you can't like you can't just pay three for this and kill some like that being it. You can't use this on offense, basically, is what I'm saying, which yeah. is the, always the problem with this. But but there there are gonna be like six turns where it's like one two three and then. I guess you don't want to, uh, and like on turn four, you have like a vigilance creature or two, and you pay like one or one or zero for this, yeah. and without really sacrificing the attacks that you're making. Yeah, I really like this. I'm gonna see plus.
Hey, I'm also on a C plus. I, I, I think this card in terms of gameplay is probably one of the scariest things that you're going to be doing when uh, getting into like a sort of really dense combat based scenario against the white deck when, when you have the combat tricks specifically Oof, yo. like if you yeah. just have three creatures right you can just block and feel very confident that you're not going to get blown out because oh, like yeah. if you make like a reasonable block and then you just have to tap your creatures to cast this removal spell and they cast yeah. a combat trick yeah. that's extremely good that's extremely scary for your opponent i think as a defensive tool the convoke makes this extremely powerful so this is c plus for me like the four mana make two 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 vigilance guys is gonna be so huge for for convoke cards mm-hmm uh, Next up, and, yeah. or do you have something to say? Just so? like again, like battles, people are gonna be attacking even if they're a slow yeah. deck. But the problem is that the slower decks that's like might might hold on to their attacks until they are in a comfortable spot yeah. to mm -hmm. loot an attacker. Um, enduring bond warden white for an O one, it has backup one. And when this creature dies, put its counters on target creature you control. You're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. Nah. Okay, okay. I have traumas from Star Pupil, okay? You gotta understand. Um, oh, wait, wait. I, I definitely didn't rate Star Pupil high. I rated it as like a D plus, like it was. Yeah, yeah, sir, certainly. Sorry. Okay. But it's I, like way better than, than the Star Pupil. Uh, this is way better than Star Pupil. That is true. Like, I do think this card is, if you are aggressive, especially if you have the red white uncommon or even the green white uncommon this does become a lot better and does become a card i'm interested in and it's hmm. this might be good enough in any white deck we have a relatively high amount of keywords i feel like in this set at least on creatures that i want to actively play kind of everything has a keyword honestly this plays well with billy rider lifelinker and stuff and it's like a one mana one two on turn one is good but this has like later applications still mm. and you can just use this to jump block like if you get in for a few damage or something just use it as jump block for the counters or somewhere else um, but i don't love this too much i'm gonna start this as c yeah same c i, I, I kind of want to think, give it I a think c there plus. is a better one drop in white yeah but uh not that it matters when i want to like kind of when i want to one drop i kind of want as many as i can get but i still think there is a better one drop i wanted to give it like a c plus but i think it's still a c yeah but i can see it being better for same, sure but same it's like yeah wait 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 g g give me a spoiler what 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 wait one drop is better than this uh the transform guy i think is better than this oh um I'm like I'm on a C plus for this. I I think this does a great job of pushing damage. Okay, like, if Scotty um... is on a C plus on this, I'm on a C plus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. nice C plus. There we go. <laughs> I'm it. glad I'm glad I gave such a convincing argument. <laughs> you can continue if you want to. <laughs> no, I'm plus. good. That's letter okay, okay. and a symbol. Uh, golden scale aeronaut, four and a white for a two three. Flying with backup one. Meh. I guess this is an okay top end card if you need it, but I, I can't really see why I wouldn't want the Intercessor as my top end, even in aggressive decks over this. Five mana, three, four flyer is pretty bad. You can get something in the air, I guess. You can uh, maybe nicely kill some battles, but I'm still not into this. I'll start this as a D. I'm hard in the, on this. Not super high. It is a five drop. That if you do put it somewhere else, like that's obviously good for you. But then it's very small. So I'm gonna start as a D plus. I mean, three four flyer is fine, but uh, it's not the end of the world. It can be better than that. But it's still kind of small. I mean, it doesn't do enough. Even when like, it really doesn't do enough. Oh, jump yargle. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just on a. I mean, that one too also carries the tricks really well, because at one point it's going to move the counters away. I mean, that one too could be easily be a C plot, but let's start it there. Anyways, this one... I mean, the one drop could be a B minus or a yeah, B, that I'm one not going to lie, really it could good. be. Uh, let's be let's go. Yeah? yeah? Move the one drop to a C plus for me, because I also really like it with equipment. Nice, nice. got them. I, I really, really like it with equipment. So, anyways, this thing, D plus for me, a bit higher than, than NCA. 
Yeah, I'm also on, I'm also on a D plus. Uh, fun functionally speaking, this might play out similarly. Like if it had haste, kind of sorta, right? You jump something else, you get to attack with it mm. that turn, get the damage in, then you poke in after that. But like that's pretty unexciting. D plus. I would like okay. it more if it had haste, because then it is, it's it that's fifty percent power on this creature, right? Every turn. Which is a lot. Yes. Uh, infected defector. Four and a white for a Phyrexian Knight is a 4 tree, and when it dies, incubate tree. Uh, okay, well, I would rather have the last card as my top end than this card. Five mana, 4 tree doesn't block anything. It trades, I guess, and then you get an incubate tree thing, but then your opponent just bounce this, huh? Your goal. Uh, I, I don't know. This kind of like three mana. Even three mana, three choose, two choose, die when you draw a card out, like whatever. This is comparable to a five mana four tree that says draw a card when it dies, I think. It's probably a little bit better, but not much better. Uh, I think this is mainly just burst in the last card. I guess I can see maybe black white decks where I would rather have this as my top end, but then I'll probably just have the intercessor again, much yeah, or I'd ra much rather have that as my top end. Uh, I don't know. I think this is gonna play. I I could go optimistic D, but I'm gonna go skeptimistic D minus. Skeptimistic. <laughs> yeah, 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 I couldn't get the word out. So. No, that, that's the word, skeptimistic. Yeah. It's way better than whatever the word's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, by the way, for the last card, like, flyers don't have to clear battles right away. You can just play the battle later, and you still get, have that, like, three-powered three uh, flyer, I guess. But this one, I'm on a D plus as well. I think it's similar. Uh, people have to block for battles, okay, so I guess... Okay, fine, I'll go D. And this clears a good amount of battles, um, so people kind of want to block it and, and trade with it. I guess it trades with most things, so that's fine, but still, like, you're paying two more, that's seven in total. You're getting good stats uh, in after it dies. Dying triggers are hard, way harder to do. Um, you kind of want your five drops and six drops, that's your end game. You want them to have, like... ETBs, if they have good ETBs and stats, then sure, uh, dead triggers are completely fine. Um, but this one doesn't really, so just a D plus, I can see it going down. But yeah, it's okay, I guess. Not the end of the world. D plus for me as well. Okay, next up, Inspired Chant. Two white, white instant creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Okay, white aggro decks might be my favorite decks to play in limited. I know everyone is surprised. I I actually like them more than red aggressive decks. Um, and there are very few formats where I want this card in my main deck. This is too clunky. Yeah. Expensive. It doesn't. Uh, at least in, in the past, I don't know. Five sets, meh. I don't know. Whatever. We've seen like some upgraded version of this, which is sometimes which can be solid as a one-off. Sure, even has a blast kind of an upgrade on this. Um, so I'm gonna start this as a D minus. I there might be a decks that would want this, but I'm gonna lean that no deck wants this. To yeah, be I'm always on a D minus on this thing. Uh, four mana is huge. So many things need to go right. Like if you. Uh, it doesn't really like win you the game a lot of times, right? But that's kind of the main thing it does when 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 you do it. But it's not very consistent in doing it, so whatever. And then so many things need to go right. Like it's not just that you need a large board. Also, opponents needs to needs to make enough blocks for this to make sense, right? Some of your creatures needs to, need to survive. And even when you're let's say you have five creatures, even when you're attacking with everything, it's easy to play around this and. They usually opponents just don't block every single creature with uh, exact uh, toughness, or it, it's, it's never just good. And there's so many games where you trade, opponent trades, and you got two creatures. Only one gets in the combat, and then it's like the worst trick in the world. So, very too situational and too conditional for it to be good. Even though the ideal situation seems great, it basically never comes up. So yeah, D minus. It's not unplayable. Yeah, the one thing I would like to add is that Bladed Onslaught was actually good in the last set. I 
I liked played it onslaught in Boros more than has yes Flat. yes uh, but the thing is that if you got onslaught to cheap and you could double spell with it if you have the red creature or something you were fine using it as a combat trick yeah kinda or like something along those lines and it was two mana a lot of times without you even having to keep some creatures alive because you get artifacts that never live yeah the yeah, thing is that it had a fail case that was pretty decent you could use it as a combat trick or you could even use it on defense as like a kind of a combat trick in it had the fail case this four mana for this yeah no not plus generally so since it's not four it's like two a lot of times plus going wide was so easy like you get some random mites and you get like one ones from uh, the chimney rebel and such so you got these incidental creatures which you didn't play them just because you had uh, a card a plated onslaught a card like charge you played them because those were just good and then the deck worked and there was first strike uh, and some a little bit of trample i guess but first strike mainly that also made that like plus uh plus two what uh, plus two or whatever just uh, win that combat uh, with that creature so that was huge huge difference got it d minus nothing to add okay next up kitkin billy rider two and a white for a one three double strike it's a knight okay first off the art and the name are like 10 out of 10. that's true that's they, true there's there's like based on art and name this is the best card in the set um this is from eldrain right i have no clue probably oh no it's for yeah it's not from eldrain i think it's from Lorwyn. it says it says what? it on the card <laughs> it says it on the card oh yeah 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 true but two oh yeah yeah kitkins were, <laughs> this, yeah kitkins were in Lorwyn. oh yeah, yeah yeah it looked like an eldrain card so yeah um anyway three mana one three double strike is an upgrade on what we've seen like the last two times I think we saw a similar card was one two, and the one twos, especially in Eldraine, the one two red cap melee, whatever the card is called, maybe it's not called that, uh, red cap raider, whatever, whatever, I I don't remember something like that. Um, it was pretty good in Eldraine, and it was a one two three mana one three double strike, massive difference to one two. Uh, it doesn't actually trade with three two twos there's tricks and counters even better so i do like this card a lot because counters are very good on double strike th things and the one two even in strict haven i like the one two one two, one two you needed to do work i liked it only in lore hold aggro like kind of like silver cool but lore hold uh, and then if you had some tricks and so on i i i like the card fine okay Anyway, back to this. Uh, three toughness is a huge upgrade on two toughness. And I think it's going to make this card actively good. And actively is something you are looking for in white decks. Um, still not a B grade, but somewhere in the C. I'm going to say C+. Plus. Yeah, I'm going to start with a C plus as well. I think there is enough cards that work really well with this card. Yep. Um, on common. But also on uncommon like uh <laughs> the boros saga being just one of them which is yeah yeah pretty crazy this thing <laughs> uh you kind of have to chomp most of them so that's pretty huge and uh, there's good equipment there's good plus on some counters like that there is a lot that just works well with this thing um so yeah um easy c plus for me i think this is a pretty high pick in white uh which is not usually the case, uh, I think. I mean, uh, I think, like, close to the last few cards, not the last three cards that we saw are in high picks, but close to everything else is honestly a high pick in white, I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The egg white is looking mm -hmm. good. <laughs> C plus is all around. Okay. Nice, nice. We got to another uh, good okay, card. Okay, next up Knight of the New Coalition, three and a white for a choo choo. Vigilance, and when it in ETB is created, choo choo, white and blue. Knight Chris token, Vigilance. Uh, effectively a reprint of Dominaria for mana make choose choo choo Vigilance things. Uh, but I do think Vigilance is better in this set, and I do think the make choo choo choose was the second best white common in Dominaria, personally. And it was quite good in there. Like, I would probably rate that as a C+, maybe even approaching B-, but 
I do really like Vigilance in this set. Counters again, even on these, nice things to have. Mm, nice with Convoke, I'm gonna go B-. minus. Yeah, I'm okay with B-, minus. like, this is so good with Convoke. It is just so good. Um, having two bodies on a 4 up is real nice. Well, do you usually prefer 4-4 four, four and 2-2? Two, two? It kind of depends on the format. Like, here with co go really nice Convoke I, I would say, I, I personally would say almost always 2x, 2-2s, two, but it depends. Yeah, w once you get, like, to 4-drops and 5-drops and 6-drops, like, multiple varies get real nice. I mean, obviously, okay, it's, it's great on early creatures, but usually on early creatures it's kind of, like, too very small bodies like maybe a 1-1 one, one, on for three mana 1-1 one, one flyer and a 1-1 one, one creature in this set we do have a 2-2 two, two flyer and a 1-1 one, one creature which is amazing uh but yeah usually it's insurance against removal it's works, it works super super well with convoke like you play this on turn four and right there and then you have a zero mana plus two plus two flying trick that you can use yeah. Uh, without any extra help, there's no no extra synergies, anything crazy. Like that, that trick could actually go higher. Um, we're gonna see. It's gonna be a weird balance that you need to find between playing like tricks, uh, battles, and creatures that actually can do something yeah, to battles that, and that, tricks. That's why the secret is just play mono white, so you don't have to decide on. You can just play all of them. So so you so you don't have a, such a, such huge card yeah, pool to, to choose cut from. Cards from your deck because you're playing mono white. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I'm okay with the B minus. Yeah, I, I think this card is very good. I agree with everything. Um, I'm a little bit wary about taking it as a B minus specifically for glutting fours really early in the draft, so I'd probably take it as a C plus, but I agree this card is great. This is going to be like huge in Azorius. Okay, next might be the most interesting white common. Core Halberd, white. Equipment, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance, and it is an equipped cost of one. So in white decks, it's almost strictly better than Sword Sword. Sword Sword has historically been pretty meh, but there are some sets where it's been okay. But giving Vigilance, like just adding Vigilance to Sword Sword is massive, and Vigilance in this set seems extra good. Um, I honestly think this card, this equipment might be really fucking good. Yeah, I agree. It just... So much for one plus one you're getting. You play, and like the uh, other problem with equipment sometimes is that you don't, they play offense pretty well, but they play defense pretty poorly because you don't want to move them around that much and you don't want to spend mana moving them around with this. You don't have to. You just get vigilance. You yeah. don't have to. If the creature doesn't die, you don't have to. Uh, so, for those reasons, I'm going to start this card as a B. B? Yes. Holy. We, are getting, we are getting into hot territory now. I oh, think yeah. Might, is that, yeah. I don't think so. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, 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 B minus, B minus. Okay, okay, that seems better. Um, the thing is, it's a common, and I don't know how many you can play. And again, really good tricks and really good equipment do have diminishing returns. Because you need enough creatures to to you to to have them, and you're probably gonna play some removal as well. And I don't know if you're gonna play battles, maybe. Uh, so there is there are diminishing returns. So I'm gonna give this a C plus. I think it's great. Uh, works very well with convoke. Works very well with protecting your battles. Works very well with a lot of white common creatures, and that's just white, right? You you're gonna play, probably play two colors. Uh, like with double strike, with lifelink, uh, it, it just works nicely. Uh, with even with a, like, you put it on a three three guy that already has vigilance. Well, now it's a four four, and in it has vigilance still. <laughs> That's like non bob but but it works well. So, yeah, this man that two two vigilance convoke plus two plus a trick might be closer to feet than than what it looks like at the first glance. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this is really good. I'm I'm on a, I'm on a C plus, real nice, real nice C plus. Uh, so I know NCA said this very eloquently already, but I feel like this bears repeating. In that, the higher the equip costs is on something, the exponentially. Well, I don't know if exponentially, but the the equipment gets much much worse, right? Like two is much much worse than equip one. Yeah, much harder. And yeah. in a weird way, 
like the biggest point I think is that having vigilance on this thing almost reduces the equip cost because you don't have to spend extra yeah. mana tossing this around, yep. which is massive for your mana efficiency yep. in terms of how you're planning out combat. Uh, this card is incredible. I actually, I, I'm also on a B minus, but I think that's sort of later in the format when I think diminishing returns won't be quite as bad because other people will also be taking this quite highly in the beginning. If like p these are coming around, sure, I don't want like three on the battlefield. But I'm like super happy about the quality of my creatures and the quality of my deck if I have two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I'm thinking on similar lines. Like I think the first one could even be like a B, uh, but it does have decently heavy diminishing returns. But I'm definitely gonna be happy playing at least two, and I'm willing to pick it quite highly because it, I'm gonna be very sad if I don't have these in my my decks. I assume. <laughs> and it's probably and it's like yeah sure maybe week one you can get this higher but I assume if it's gonna be good like we think it's gonna be good it is gonna go up in people's big orders and you do have to pick them higher. Next up, Realm Breakers Grasp, uh, one in the white for an enchantment aura, enchant artifact or creature, enchant permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Isn't this? Planar disruption that can't hit planeswalkers. Planar disruption also stops the mana abilities, right? Maybe. I don't remember. Uh, anyway, solid removal. Never. There is a sacrifice team in this set, and you can still convoke it for mana in this set. Um, all that said, solid removal, but not like great removal, I don't think. I'm between like a C and a C, plus, but I'm gonna start as a C. What was power disruption for you in the end? B minus? C plus B minus. Yeah, I'm gonna C plus B minus on this one. Yeah, sacrifice team, but convoke, like very nice. Plus, uh, there is some bouncing around. Uh, the, the, there is a blink effect in white. Uh, and there is yeah. feat of resistance. Wait, okay, I don't even know the name, new name, but the new okay, feat of Okay, okay, C. Yeah. Good point. The... Okay, never mind. I'll start as a C plus, but I think it, it, this might drop in this set. It might. I'm gonna start as a B minus still. I think it's a good removal. But uh, in the end, what are you, you're even if they play feet on it, like you lo you pay two mana. Yeah, it's not like the you pay three. Or yeah, the, the thing is that if you if you play feet like pre blocks and then you get rid of this and then you eat a creature or something, that's kind of horrible. That's terrible. Yes, but uh... just stinks. <laughs> what what? This card stinks. How does There's it stink? so much going wrong for it in this set. It's yeah, true. I do kind of agree after it's Lola true. talked about it. I still yeah. think it's solid, but I, I'll go down to C. I'm going to go to C+. Well. Plus. I'm gonna, it, 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 yeah, it, it didn't even, <laughs> you just said it stinks when you lower the crates. <laughs> but it's true. It doesn't, it, it doesn't stink. Like you're, but it doesn't stop a lot that opponent might be doing. I think it's still, <laughs> it's still <laughs> What's good. What's the point of removal? <laughs> Why I do mean, it does, it, does remove a it, it, it does remove a creature uh, from attacking or blocking and using the abilities. That's not a small thing. You guys All are right. going to be happy with it. It stinks. What is the grade of a card that stinks? I mean, okay, like, if your opponent is heavy, so this is obviously hyperbolic and matchup dependent, but if your opponent is heavy on Convoke, like, you're, it, this is essentially, like, Minimus containmenting their thing, which is actually horrible. Plus, also, no, a lot of... No, not. Like, how much do you have to play around considering that there's literally a common highly sought after and highly played protection spell in the set the minimum containment is like uh three mana and it gives treasure tokens for literally anything there are not that many creatures that have convoke sounds like a c to me all right yes. sounds like a c okay i thought we were going to give it like super low grade like a d or something i want a c plus i think yeah it's scotty already said c lola <laughs> earlier <laughs> <laughs> okay scroll safe two and a white Instant exile up to one target artifact creature or enchantment you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Draw a card. I don't actually think there is that many things going for this card in this set. I agree. Not that I like this card anyway, but there's the four mana make a knight. Um, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> um... There are probably some other stuff in other colors as well and so on, but you can use it as protection, but <laughs> it's three mana. Yeah. I don't want to use it as pro my protection spell. Um, all the backup creatures. Chat, 
Are you happy using three mana? Draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on my creature. No, you're not I mean, happy. If it wins a combat, that's not too bad. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, I guess, but it's still not like too good because it's three mana. It's like suit up, kinda, which is great, but that's like the best case scenario. It's like suit up, but not suit up. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I think this is gonna end up like a D. There yeah. might be a deck that wants it, but. Yeah, I don't see this card the same. I, I don't see it the, the... It's too much. Like, you don't want this to be a protection spell. You want to have some proactive things to do with it. And I don't think there is enough. It's a really, really bad protection spell. Like, the opponent has to do something to kill, to kill your creature, right? Has to use removal. And then you can protect it for three mana. How many turns are you holding up that three mana to do that? <laughs> uh, no. It's good on a, it's yeah, really good on a two like you you can make that if you have a forward in play then you make it like a two two make a two two and draw a card that's kind of fine. What do you say, Scotty? Oh, D for me as well. Mm. Okay, next up, Sigiled. Sigiled. Sigiled Sentinel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was looking for. Two and a white for a human knight is a two two with vigilance and backup one. Rock solid common. Three mana, three three vigilance. And it can be a three mana two two vigilance that puts something or puts a counter on something else and give, a life gives it vigilance. Mm, yeah, put the counter on your life linker or something, yeah. Very nice, very nice. C plus. C plus, like it a lot. C plus. Uh one and a white, Sunder the Gateway. Sorcerer, choose one, destroy target, non token, artifact, or enchantment and upon controls incubate two. Or incubate you, then transform an incubator token you control. I think even though this is kind of main deckable artifact enchantment hate, I think this is a sideboard card mainly. I really don't want to play a two mana two two in Modern Limited, and that's what this is with. The, I guess, I, and I don't think there are like that many artifacts and enchantments in this set. I guess there is the grasp, which we just saw. Yeah, but. Like, this is a fine card to put your, into your main deck, but I'm gonna say that I would rather not put it into my main deck, and I would just rather sideboard it every time. Uh, I don't want to play this, but it's okay if I have to play this. So I have access to some non-token artifact or enchantment. This is uh, a frog counter. Wait, what? The frog counter. Oh, yeah, 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 frog counter, true. And you, you, in some matchups, you'll find something. I think it's a... D or a D plus, like I, I'm fine playing, especially one. These do have also diminishing returns to some degree, um, but I'm okay playing one. But I would still rather not play the first one. I think I'm gonna start as a D. Gets much better out of the sideboard. White is so white removal is so bad against uh, white. <laughs> It, it just destroys destroys it. like this. It's, if you use this on the opponent, use the removal. That's kind of devastating. Um, I mean, hmm, what enchantments? We got some enchantments, like uh, yeah, we have some. But we do have the uncommon enchantments that make a huge incubator token and then give Phyrexian something, for mm -hmm. example. I like this deck. Uh, uh, I like this card. I like it's not in the world to play like a. Random two to turn two, um, just a vanilla creature. I'm on like a. It's great in cyborg, obviously. It's amazing in cyborg, but okay with like a C, um, C or C minus. It's kind of like white has really good like two drops. It it feels like, and three drops. So you don't kind of care about this. I'm okay starting this as a C minus. I'm okay as a C minus as well. In in a battle world, uh, sometimes you just need your two drops. Yeah, okay, I'll go to a D plus. I think playing one of these is fine. And it does get better if you are like black white and care about Phyrexians, I guess. Yeah. Um okay, next up. Sword Sawn Cavalier. One and a white for a human knight, it's a three one. It has first strike as long as another knight entered the battlefield under your control this turn. I mean, solid shoe drop. I think this is worse than the life linker, even in knights, but it might be close. Um, the two 
the other shoe drop isn't a night, I guess. But I still think it's like kind of close, but this is still a good shoe drop in in nights. It may be even a great shoe drop. Might be better. But if you don't have that many nights, it's okay. I guess white has enough nights. This is probably always going to be at least an okay shoe drop. So if I need shoe drops, I'll play this. And then if I have a bunch of nights, pretty good. Pretty great. Uh, I'll go to C+. Plus, I think two drops are really important. This is a pretty solid two drop. Uh, oh. C plus C. I'll go C. I'm on a C. It does need that support and you need to play things before combat. But I mean, 3-1 first stack is super high to, hard to block. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do play something first, sorry. <coughs> if you do play something first, it can be double blocked much more easily. <laughs> yeah. Is the thing. So it kind of loses the advantage of having first track with open mana. But um, I want to see. It's solid, solid uh, two drip. I'm probably going to be happy having it in most decks. Are there, are there any non-mythic battles off the top of your head that make nice? Mm, there's the blue-white rare. Oh, there is the uncommon uh, battle. The two and the white make a an knight and two two knight okay, for okay, three, okay. and then it's an anthem. On the that's back reasonable. Back. It's, it's, it's like Ooh, otherwise a little awkward that like the turn you're casting your battle, you know, because you really want to flip it ASAP, it's not going to have first strike, probably. Yeah, the white uncommon battle makes a knight. Man, the battles are going to just stop some so many boards. Like, when, when yeah. you, when you okay, need that, deal, like... that is kind of a good point. This into the white uncommon battle is kind of a nasty curve. It's nasty. They, they are just going to stop a good amount of uh, battles, right? Uh, sorry, a good amount of uh, boards is like... You hit it once, and then you need to just like get one more damage in or something, or one or two, and the opponent just doesn't want to let you, and they never attack. It's gonna be interesting. It's very interesting. I can see this going up to C plus, but I'm gonna start as a C. Mm, Scotty, what did you give it? C as well. C is across the board. Okay, Tarkir Dune Saper, white, for a dog warrior. Uh, it's a one two. And then it has a transform cost of 4 and a fire exe and green. And it transforms into a 4-3 trample. It's a fire exe and dog warrior when it transforms. Um, I like this card a lot. It's a 1-drop. It wears something like counters decently well. A 1-mana one 1-2 one wears equipment decently well early on. And then at some point, when you feel like you want to pay four to flip this to get a four three trample maybe that counter is also good with this so like give it at them previously um and i feel like you're gonna either flip this relatively late or like flip but they like ab ability to have the flip is really powerful because you do kind your opponent has to consider the fact that you can flip this and protecting like battles becomes a lot harder when you're Opponent kind of has a 4-3 haste that they can use. Mm, love this one drop. I think it's better than the other one drop, but very confident about this. I'll start this as a B minus or a B. I'll say B minus. Yeah, I really like this one. Uh, this is going to be really big against battles, right? Because like, if you play battle on turn 3, you can have... Oops, you got you can have a four three trample guy attacking it, so uh it's pretty damn good. Four and lose to life uh is a very fine effect for this one. Like you get a fine a, a playable one drop. I mean it's not a good one drop. Uh, one two, just one two being one two, that's it. But it's huge that you can make it into a this like a really good three drop for four mana, I guess. Uh, extra mana. This is going to be a really nice like uh, thing to play on curve or to just uh, randomly put in. It works really well, it convokes all of these one drops. I'm going to start as a C+, plus, but I can see it going up. Uh, but like playing a lot of creatures really works well with convoke, if that's what you're going for. Even though white, white on its own doesn't like have card or and such things for convoke. What do you think, Scotty? Uh, yeah, nah, I guess I'm a hater. I guess I guess I'm the hater. Um, I think the difference, like if we want to take a step back and say, hey, uh, four mana, lose two life, or four three haste, right? That comes in. That's like a pretty decent card. Um, but they'll see this coming first of yeah. all. 
right? Because it's just going to be on the battlefield. So like they can make their uh, appropriate moves to defend a battle or potential battle, right? Because it's not like you're battling on the same turn that this is coming down. You're battling before this. So they have like an entire turn to react to that and make sure it doesn't die to this sorcery speed transformation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really want to be getting value off of the one drop while it's there before I transform it, right? I, I need like a I need like a reason, and that reason is probably convoking stuff, because it's not it's not knights, obviously, you know, because it's. I, mean, I think the fact that you have backup and good equipment is reason enough. Uh, I mean, like if we're if we're backing up stuff, I mean, I, I'd much rather have the other one drop, which actually helps. My yeah, other I agree. Push the board, so. uh I think it's still kind of close because the counters also synergize well with the with transform the flip. Yeah. yeah, with the transform. But I agree, I would rather put them on the other one drop. But I think this is better, like overall. Sure. Um, I'm just a little, I'm I'm a little dubious of of the four mana. Okay, like like are are you? Your opponent at least two mana up. You know, when you go into your fourth turn, are you, are you just jamming this? If that was your initial plan to just. Look, Go I don't on. think Elevate my plan round. is to ever transform this on four. Yeah. Okay. But it's just like something that I have the option to do, which is really nice. All right. <clears throat> if we can get some counters on this like pretty consistently and they can't just trade it off with their two drop, I'm, I'm it, it's it's fine. It's fine. I'm still on a C for this. Okay. Oh, we are done with commons. Yeah. NCA, I'm guessing, uh, I mean, when they have to... Let's do uncommons, but then I'll probably go. Okay. Uh, just give me a second to blow my nose. Uh, if you want to, Scott, if you want to start reading uh, these, uh, go ahead. The first one, Elspeth Smite. Okay, Elspeth Smite. White for an instant. Elspeth Smite deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. If that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. Uh, one mana for this type of effect is super cheap. This is a decent amount of damage. And as we said before, because of the nature of battles, attacking, blocking, and getting into direct combat will be a big deal. I'm actually really happy that there's this in the Convoke spell in the format with the uh, the Feet of Resistance combat trick. You know, there's at least like some counterplay. There's a lot of risk yeah. in terms of both of those. Actually, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Being quote unquote more mana efficient than uh, Feet of Resistance is actually a big deal in terms of combating like a super powerful combat trick as well. Um, I, I think this. I think this card is fine. You know, As, especially since I, I do think that this set is going to be mostly battle focused. Uh, normally, these cards are not good. Yeah. Norm, normally, I don't love these cards. You know, because like the the whole point is to help you survive in the early game. That's like their only function. But considering we can force and shape the game around combat battle, I'm actually much much higher on this type mm -hmm. of effect. I think this is a C for me. Yes, and the good thing about this compared to common one, it doesn't kill anything, but it can hit. Vigilance creatures, which is nice because the other one can. It can also kill something on blocks, but that's the worst than killing something on attacks because it's also stop. It's already stopping the damage you're gonna deal. Um, I'm on, I'm on the same grade for this as the common, so a C <clears throat> as well. I think it's gonna be solid. Um, I'm a bit lower than this. I'm okay with. Uh... Okay, we'll see. It's one mana. I mean, this is a huge upgrade from what we usually get. Uh, yeah. Like, it's just no damage, no exile. Um, there are some nice ways to tap creatures for the opponents. On, a bit on common, a bit on uncommon. I can, eh, it's most like blue-white. So the other one could play out like really, really well. I think it's going to be really I, good. I, but the thing is that the other one doesn't hit vigilance creatures. This yeah, does. but I mean tapping the opponent's creatures. Yeah, yeah. So, I think the other one in blue white is gonna be crazy, crazy good. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I am happy with my C on the other card because I can see situations where your opponent will play a lot of vigilant stuff, and then the thing is really weird. No, yeah. but there's also gonna. Be, I think there's gonna be some situations. I don't know. Opponent just. Attacks with the flyer to clear that battle and expects to get a blocker, right? Yeah. So there's the, yeah. and then you just use it, boom, and there is no blocker. Um, but yeah, see, see, see for this one, it's fine. Oh yeah, this one is interesting. Oh, I'm reading, right? Yeah. Invasion of Belenon. When Invasion of Belenon enters the battlefield, create a two-two white and blue knight creature token with vigilance. Again, vigilance, and when it flips, you do need to deal five damage to it. 
So it has five defense. You get an anthem. Just enchantment creatures you control get plus one plus one. Okay, this is a saga that I'm uh, one of the I think rare sagas, yeah. That I'm okay clearing with a trick. That I'm super happy clearing with a trick. Like I'm okay trading my trick just to get clear the saga. It's it basically reads to me. Uh, let's say that to, to flying trick that seems like the easiest way to do it probably. Um, oops. Remove like use uh, transform your your trick into an anthem effect, which seems pretty fucking good. Um, of course, you don't have to do it, but I'm I'm very 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 saga. Okay, uh, I'm <laughs> battle. Uh, I'm very very happy with that. Um, I think this is extremely powerful, and it also creates a body. It is just a two two until it flips, then it becomes a three three. I am on a B for this saga, uh, for, uh, ah, for this battle. It's probably the best one uh, in on uncommon level that I saw so far, I think. Or a B yeah, minus. The fact, that, the fact that it adds to the board at all in its first chapter is really strong. Um, and when this comes down, the game really starts to revolve around this. Like, not, not all battles are like this. Um, yeah. But 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 this one, especially since it can come down early, and the night deck looks to be more proactive and aggressive, um, I'm I'm a big fan. I'm a, I'm a little bit lower on a B minus, but th I could see this just being like the card you want. No, you know what? I'm on a B. Yeah, I, we're we're full being this. This this card is actually fantastic. Yeah, one thing I, about the combat I, tricks. Oh, go ahead. No 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 no. You you thought I thought you were finished, but you go ahead. Yeah, one, one thing about the combat tricks is that, like, what you don't want to do, like, how you don't play this card is you throw away your board in order to flip this, right? Because then you won't have much of a benefit afterwards because everything will be dead. So, like, that that's another boon for actually trying to preserve your creatures through combat or even um, using minimal amounts of loss by, like, pushing in something they don't necessarily expect to flip it and then spending cards from your hand to flip it. These are so well advised tricks, like, though. Yeah, but even, like... And even not flipping this with the trick, but attacking this with your two two vigilance and like your two two lifelink or something, your opponent has to block. Like that already works nice with tricks. You don't have to kill this saga yeah, instantly. Yeah. You can just use your tricks and do uh, get more board presence. Maybe get in a couple damage for this, and then you can repeat next turn. <laughs> like. I'm on. I, I agree with everything I said. I'm on a B plus. Mm. So you're the highest. I thought I was gonna be the highest. I'm B. Scott's B plus. Uh, Scott, you're B minus. No, I'm on a B. Oh, I'm on a B. Okay. Um, next we have Invasion of Dominaria. Uh, with it's a battle with five defense counters, and when it enters the battlefield, you gain four life and draw a card. Okay, but when it flips, it becomes. A Sarah Angel, basically. Sarah Fatekeeper. For, it's a flying 4-4 four, four Vigilance. Okay, that, that's a huge thing to get <clears throat> once it flips, right? But it's a bit problematic on the front side. It plays itself. Gives you that 4 life. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't add anything to the board. It's pretty huge. Like, you really need your other things to be able to do this. Uh, and 3 mana, and it's 5. You gotta deal 5. This one is a little bit harder to do. Uh, I think this is significantly worse than the last one. I mean, if you can just play it and flip it, it's... That's pretty good, like, you you, you got a lot from this. <laughs> even even if opponent, like, sure, you didn't deal damage to their face, but you can do that for life. That's, like, a lot. I'd rather gain 4 than get a 2-2 two -two like the stupid Anthem battle gives you. That that's becomes a 3-3 three -three and oh my god, him, him, him is more and more onto, onto this one. Uh, I think the last one is a lot better. Um, but like the, the fail case with this is you don't advance the board, like you play it in kind of later part of the game, it replaces itself and you just continue playing the game. Um, you kind of, sure, you let opponent snowball and attack the battles, that's the big problem I think with this one. Like you let them attack your battles um or kill you but you do gain that four life that's like blocking a four power creature you do get that one quasi block mm. oh on both being bad i think this one is significantly worse uh, though i think it's gonna play it worse it's the reward is pretty good ah. 
I don't know if I want. I care about this invite too much. I'm on like a C, maybe lower. I'm gonna start as a C. Okay, I'm even a little lower than that. I'm like on a C minus. Um, it's it's as we we're talking about life gain before. It depends on what your opponent wants to make the match about, right? Yeah, like, C minus is okay for me. In terms of if they're actually racing your life total, or it's like really stinking awkward if you're trying to gain life and they're actually just trying to like get down a battle in order to overwhelm you on board presence. Um, then the life gain doesn't really matter, even if they are in the business of attacking, which is pretty awkward. C minus for me. Yeah, I'm on a C with Lola, just because the backside is a really nice payoff, but I'm not at all confident that this is a battle you want in your deck, but I'm going to start the like as it is. And I'm actually on C minus. Uh, what? I'm on a C minus with Scotty. Okay, me too, me too. <laughs> I... <laughs> uh, I don't like this is on the borderlining on the like do I even want to play this or not I, I think on in more mid range decks I do but we'll see I think there are just enough things that make me not care about this but I hope it plays out better I really hope it plays out better next we have Norns Inquisitor it's a 1 and a white for a 1-1 one, one. but when it enters the battlefield you inc incubate 2 and whenever permanent you control transforms into Phyrexian, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So for four mana, you get a 3-3 three, three and a 1-1. One, one. But it's better than that, because you can pay plate on two, and you can get a 3-3 three, three on turn three, right? So you get a 1-1 one, one and a 3-3 three, three on the first two turns, on the second and third turn. Um, you can also just use that to double spell later. And, uh, you, you wait, you don't... Oh, put... A, yeah, put, put a plus box. Okay, never mind. I read it correctly. Uh, and it's going to make anything that transforms better. It doesn't stop there. So I think this is really, really nice. Oh, and it's a 3 3 haste on turn 3 as well. Yeah, and all all the transformed creatures transform into Phyrexians, right? Uh, no, no, no. I mean, you have transformed creatures like the one. Ah! Ah! You, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah. I thought it was just like. Those uh, token Phyrexians, uh, yeah, everything that transforms is a Phyrexian. Wait, no, the sagas, the, the, the battles don't transform. No, no, not the battles, I mean the transform creatures. Do battles even count as transforming? <laughs> that, that's a great question. I don't think they technically transform. I don't think they transform, yeah. I don't, yeah, yeah they might not transform, you... but they are transformed. They are transformed. They are transformed permanent when they yes. are on the battlefield, but I'm not sure if they technically transform. I they don't transform. I'm I'm pretty sure because you cast them. Yeah, you cast them transform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. The the battles are not uh, like the, they are not transforming into Phyrexians. Anyways. No, no, no. They are not Phyrexians. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Uh, this is amazing. This is amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, even if you do not do anything else with it, I like it a lot. So. Do we give this a ceiling grade or, or what do you think, guys? And uh, nah. Nope. I'm on like a B? I'm on a B. B's fine by me. Uh, I'm on a B minus. I don't think this is like that much better than the common two drops, but. Eh, uh, yeah. I'll start this. Yeah, I'll go to a B with you guys. Yeah. And you can just transform the cards that are not the tokens as well, and those. That one drop is gonna be a five four trample haze uh, trample. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's huge. Phyrexian Awakening for two and a white. When Phyrexian Awakening enters the battlefield, incubate four. Phyrexians you control have vigilance, and it's an enchantment. More vigilance in white. Like white is pretty good at defending these battles on the ground. Mm, five mana four for vigilance, and everything. Every Phyrexian has a vigilance, but you can. Yes, continue. You can play it over the two oh gosh, turns. I definitely thought I disconnected. <laughs> so you can play it over, over the two turns, right? So you can just play it on three, which is kind of bad, and then get a four four on turn four and still play a two drop. I'm okay with this card. There's some You can have some synergy with it. I'm gonna start it as a C. It is a little bit clunky, but works really well with Convoke again. <laughs> um, there's a lot of Phyrexians everywhere. Maybe on a C plus. I'm on a C plus with this. I'll, uh, man. It's like a lot of things get Vigilance, and the, the, the things that already have Vigilance, they are not for Ixian anyways. Um, incubator works with Summoning Sickness exactly like anything else. If it entered the battlefield this turn, it has Summoning Sickness. Uh, if it didn't, uh, it doesn't. So, that's it. See, once it turns into a creature, obviously. Uh, artifacts don't have Summoning Sickness. 
C plus. I like this card. Yeah, I like C plus as well. Um, the fact that you can split it up between multiple turns if you have to, if you're going to do nothing otherwise, is actually kind of awesome. And vigilance for everybody. All the incubator tokens. Good keyword. Yeah, like, if you just consider this card alone, it isn't great. Like, as a 5 drop, it isn't good. Uh, as a 3 plus 2, plus 2x2 two drops on 4, it's slightly better, but even then. on Alone, it's kind of like a flexible 4 for, for like, a total of 4. Uh, a little bit overcosted. A uh, total of 5 mana. Uh, but you do have a good amount of, yeah, Fire Exceance, giving all of your transformed creatures Vigilance, uh, all of your other Incubate tokens Vigilance, and this card is, like, all fine on its own. I agree with C+. Next we got Phyrexian Sensor for 2 and a white. We got a 3-3 that says each player can't cast more than one non Phyrexian spell each turn, and non Phyrexian creatures enter the battlefield tapped. Okay, I mean... Is it just me or does white have a good amount of non Phyrexian creatures? <laughs> yeah, at common, white does have a good amount of non Phyrexians. Yeah, right. <laughs> Like, uh, let me see, one, one second, so call, call it right, okay. So it has the one, the backup creature, the dog warrior, the human knight 3-1, then the double striker, then the human knight with vigilance, the 3-3, three, three, then the, okay. That's a lot of things that it doesn't work well with, plus you, uh, white has, is good with convoke. Non Phyrexian spells. I don't think this is good. I think this is like. Does it hurt you more than the opponent? Maybe it does. I think it does hurt the opponent more, but it's very close. Yeah, because it, it affects them first. Play the next, or play their turn out next. Like, let's, let's say you're. A lot of good cards in white on common are non Phyrexian. Um, that's the biggest problem that I have. And. May it's it's like I think it's like a vanilla three three, uh, but sometimes it's worse for you than your opponent. I think more maybe maybe more times it's gonna worse gonna be worse for you, and I don't care about this. Um, you can play it. Spell is anything that's not uh, land. Um, I'm gonna like D plus. Okay, I'm not that far off. Um, You're you also can... provoking. <laughs> Invite. Wait, hello. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, there, there, there's a couple ways we can leverage Phyrexian Sensor, right? One is, ha you know, sticking more creature type Phyrexian in our deck, so it's more likely that we can double spell where opponents can't. But uh, I guess strategic wise, if you're the one attacking, uh, then you don't really care as much if your creatures come into play tapped, and they definitely do. So, like, if this is, you know, on a really low curve, highly aggressive white deck, then I'm pretty happy with this. I'm, like, slightly more optimistic about it on average. The C- minus for me. You can play it yeah. and then play a battle next turn? When you know you're going to play a battle next turn, I guess? Yeah, I'm going to C- minus as well. I think the count is fine. It's probably going to end up being better in some decks that have a relatively high amount of Phyrexians, but I don't think that's going to be too common... And it like kind of does hurt your opponent maybe slightly more than you, but you're playing white, so you're probably having a bunch of cheap stuff. Uh, and then the double spelling does hurt you. So I'm going to see mine as well. All right, next we get Seal from Existence. For one and double white, we have a Vort 3 enchantment that says when this thing enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until this thing leaves the battlefield. I removed that's hard to cast, uh, a little bit harder to cast, uh, Oblivion Ring effect, obviously. Okay, War 3 is not nothing, right? Uh, opponents, when they choose to get rid of this, if they, yeah, ca they can't... They can't target with it with the two mana common that destroys an enchantment or an artifact. Yeah, they're gonna they pay, they're always gonna pay more than what you paid uh, to use it. So... That's a really nice thing. I really like this card. I, I'm even though it's a bit hard to cast, I'm gonna B minus. B minus for me as well. No, I'm much slower mainly because we had citizens arrest in DMU and the card was kind of bad. Uh, or the card was fine. I think double white is a huge cost because uh, especially since you have at least two playable one drops, so you can double spell with this on four or consistently. Uh, 
and so on. I'm on a, I, I, I'm on a C or a C minus. I, I guess I'll start at the C. Okay. Next I up, double double white on that card. So. I can see it going down a bit. Seraph of New Capenna. For two and a white, we have a flying tutu, but it can transform for four and a Phyrexian black mana into a 3-3 three, three flying as well. And when it attacks, you may sacrifice another creature or artifact. If you do, this guy gets plus two plus one until end of turn. Not so excited about this one. I, a three mana two two flying. I don't really like uh, in these days. Uh, in the actually in the last few years, <laughs> um, paying four and losing At two this life. Point, it's like last seven years basically, but maybe over, yeah. Ma it could yeah maybe. Um, and then it you gotta pay four and lose a life or or five and lose no life to make it have like plus one plus one and this effect that I don't really care about too much I don't like this I just don't like anything about this card I, 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 I just don't think it's good um, D I think it is a very vanilla uh, flyer creature that maybe even a D minus but. Uh, I'm on a D, I can see it going to a D minus, like, I don't think you put this in your deck, basically, ever. Mm, I guess I'm slightly higher on Wind Drake that transforms into something. Um, D plus. Yeah, I can play a Wind Drake and then I can pay 4 to 5 mana to get plus 1 plus 1. Oh, yeah. Sign me up, D. Okay. I mean, Next like, it up? does threaten, like, so if you're gonna, if you're gonna sink 4 mana into this, like, you're probably at a point where you're deciding to clock your opponent for five. Yeah, right? yeah, it, it, it does threaten a decent amount of damage and it can single-handedly kill battles, some battles, for example. Yeah, that's true. I just... A lot to pay, a that's lot. Main, to pay. That, that's mainly why I put it at D and not D minus. Yeah, yeah. Okie dokie. Sun Blessed Guardian. For one and a white, it's a 2 2. That's it. But for five and a Phyrexian red mana, it transforms into. 3-3, three, three, but when it attacks, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Put a plus one plus one counter on that token for each plus one plus one counter on this guy. Sacrifice that token at the beginning of the next 10 step. Now, 2 mana 2-2, two, two, I think it's better than a 3 mana 2-2 two, two flyer. Uh, yes. I don't S think it's particularly close, but yes. Yeah. And... This is a huge cost though, like 5 mana, but it does, like this is a good uh, thing to put like plus and plus and counters on and maybe make it not die. And then you Fuck. can, you can um, attack with like double, I don't see, think it's too, too unreasonable to attack with uh, double 5-5 five, five on turn 5 with this thing. You did get a lot of spend a lot of things on it and uh, a lot of mana, but I really like this uh, tutor. Um, I think a lot of times it is gonna be a two mana two two, uh, but the ceiling is it can, can be high, right? I'm gonna give give it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it like a C or a C plus. I'm not sure, because this is a really nice upside, and I don't expect too much from my two drops. Like uh, being a two two is. Is very is perfectly passable. Mm, I think I started as a C, but this this, this, can, this can go up uh, definitely. I like I like my two drop with with upside as a C plus, C plus for me. Yeah, I'm a little low on C. The transform side is really nice. Like the nice thing about this is not that it's like a two mana two two and then it transforms like a vanilla three three or a four four even. It is. It does threaten a lot of damage when it transforms for a turn. <clears throat> uh, but I'm gonna see. As well, I am. I think the other two drops are better than this. Yeah. Surge of Salvation, the card everybody's talking about. Uh, for a single white, you get an instant that says, You and permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Prevent all damage that black and or red sources would deal to creatures you control this turn. Mm, nope. Nobody's talking about it for limited purposes, I think. <laughs> uh, this is bad. This is bad. It. Uh, I don't care about protecting my creatures, that's the only thing I'm gonna do. The white trick uh, that also protects is like infinitely better. 
No indestructible, no change to toughness and power. We lost NCA. Oh, oh, I disconnected for some reason. <laughs> my, my Discord decided to restart, I don't know why. And this um, is kind of weird, like, is this, how good is this in a sideboard, right? Two creatures you control this turn. I think it's pretty good in a sideboard because you, it's a one mana that... It's one mana, yeah. It's one mana that works as combat tricks and protection at the same time. Um, I'm, I'm on, I'm on an F and I'm okay with the sideboard grade. Yeah, I do think in some sets this could be okay to main act, but we have protections plus it's common, which like kind of weird with this because if you really would be in the market for a one mana protection spell i think this is playable because it does have relatively high upside against red and, and or black decks um i'm on a sideboard grid as well i don't think you should main deck this in this format uh yeah okay um no f <laughs> tiller of f? you want to say something scotty no are we all on f's yeah 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 uh, Tiller of Flesh, for 3 and a white, you get a 2-4, and whenever you cast a spell that targets 1 or more permanent, incubate 2. Okay, this is really good with tricks. Um, it's a... yeah, it is a 2-4 though. <laughs> it is a 2-4 though. Uh, yeah, that's... Alright, I mean, the 2-4 the is a big problem, but you, you, you can... I mean, it, it, it's good with tricks and removals, and I think you're going to have a lot of those. I think this is a good card. I think this is... Yeah, no, no, no. I think this is a good card. Uh, you're going to have removals. You're going to have tricks, and you're going to love them. And again, like, with the plus two, plus two flying, I think this works incredibly well. Uh, even just dealing damage or killing a battle or whatever you want to do. Um, well, I'm going to give this, like, a, a B-, minus at least. I... I think I'm not wrong. I really don't like 4 mana 2 force, I hate them, but... And you need to work for all of that. Ah, you need to work for all of that. Oh, that's that's a bit problematic. God damn it. I'm gonna still start it as a B-, minus, but it could be a lot worse. No, I like Tiller Flesh. I think I think 2-4 is not a great stat line in terms of tussling, but I do think 2-4 is actually a fine stat line in terms of uh, being able to survive until the next turn. If you just sort of cast this on curve. Like, like if we're basing our entire deck's identity around Tiller or fleshing people, then that's not the way to go. We're not, we're, we're not asking to jam bad cards to make this good. We're just playing tricks and removal. You know, that's fine. And if this sort of gets one activation, great. Two activations, we're doing it, right? And I, I, I don't think it's that embarrassing. It's not that hurt. hard, yeah. Bounce spell as well. Yep, this is a B minus for me as well. It does work with bounce and removal and stuff. Um. Uh... I think you guys are too high on this. Uh, I'm expecting that I'll play like six to eight spells that work with this. I still... The problem is that it's... Well, white is a pretty aggressive color from the looks of it, as always, nowadays. And I really don't want a 4 mana 2 for I really don't want a 4 mana 2 for That's the main problem with this card. It is decent if you kind of get like one incubate token and good if you get two. I think the fail case is pretty bad and it doesn't do anything without the tricks it's a horrible top deck as well i'm on a d plus okay uh one one argument for the archetype in white i guess is that i, I really don't see any sort of phyrexian based incubation leaning decks as being aggressive like i i don't think they can beat down the ones that w would want phyrexian awakening the ones that would want like yeah, i guess yeah. norn's inquisitor can get aggressive but yeah that's fair um yeah uh, D plus though. Yes, that's like like I I agree with what you said, but it's like I I don't think I wanted the most of my white decks, and then like sure that might be a deck where I want it, but I still don't think it's gonna be amazing. Sure. I can see that it's going down <laughs> easily, but I, I want to believe. Uh, Zalfirin Zulf Lancer for two and a white, you get a three three, and whenever another knight enters the battlefield under your control. This guy gets plus one plus one and vigilance until the end of turn. Yeah, that's a really nice thing to do to get on a vanilla creature for three. Yeah, they, 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 this is a lot. Like they, they, this does a lot. Like this is really good. I'm on a B minus. I want this to be my three drop. Um, I want all of my three drops to be this. I mean, oh wow! But I mean, 
you make two knights uh, with uh, with a four mana thing. So this is like a five five vision at that turn, and even if you never make knights ever, something I don't know what happens. You never draw them. It's a three three for three mana. That's great. So easy B minus. It's it's really humorous, I guess. Um, sometimes we have to check ourselves, like because I also think this is a B minus, but I also think this card's way better than Tiller Flesh. <laughs> You know, yeah. like you build around this and then you do it, but this card is actually just like a fine card when mm. you're not doing it. Um, so I'm, I'm a I'm a lower chiller, flush to C plus. Yeah, I'm on a C plus as well. Yeah, that's a good that's a good analogy. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm between C plus and B minus for this, but I guess I'll go to a B minus. I I think it's like kind of comparable to the common tree drop, but this does have. A really nice upside like this in the four drop attack with five power vigilance. Yeah, seems good. Um, this isn't as good later on, I guess. I think it's overall a little bit better. So B minus for this one. Mm. Oh, we are done with white commons. And that means we are going to continue tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to wake up in six hours. That's that's <laughs> enough time, though, for sure. What do you think about white guys? So, NCA was your last grade on Zephyr and Lancer. Is that a C plus or B minus? B minus. B minus. Okay. What do you think about white before we close this? I really like white. White looks pretty excellent. All the, like, oh, at least most of the cards seem to want to be doing similar things. You have also this like nice overlap between vigilance. Uh, vigilance counters and a uh, convoke stuff, which I really like. Yeah, yeah, like it can be explosive, it can be aggressive, and uh, it can be fine uh, if you're not aggressive, like uh, maybe you're Azorius. You, mm -hmm. you don't have to just be straight up aggro. I think. Yeah, white. Yeah, looks... I think if, I think white is more like. Kind of a mid range color or by the looks of it in in this format. Yeah. Play like nicely statted creatures and just smash, but it's not like hyper aggro. Well, some white deck, sure, but. Doesn't really have value, but when does white have value, really? <laughs> uh, just the card advantage doesn't usually exist there.